to Flooring Models Daily Vlog. Here we are on the 9th of October 2015. The end of another fantastic week, busy week uh, for me. Uh, been working on the actual uh, Starfighter uh, vinyl res. Everyone go and buy them. Oh, it's absolutely fantastic. What can I say? I don't know where I'm actually done with my bottle now. Here it is. Um, there's a bit of a secret to this, which I found when I was doing this one. Mix it up extremely well. Okay, I mean, give it it. So you might notice, I've got a stainless steel marine grade uh, M5 uh, nut floating around in there, just to mix it up. What I found is, I think that I've used the thin stuff off the top because it wasn't really thick down the bottom. It worked flawlessly, don't get me wrong. But now I'm starting to use this, I'm wearing down in it, it's getting thicker. Either that or it's drying out. So when I'm spraying it, get a little bit of, you know, my 0.2 needles having a bit of a hard time, maximum air pressure, we're good to go again. But it does a little bit of spitting and coughing and all the rest of it. And I think that's because I haven't physically shaken this up good enough to start with. So now we're getting down into it and we're probably around about two thirds into it. Uh, about, yeah, I probably used a third, about two thirds left it's slightly thicker and I'm just noticing my airbrush is struggling just a little bit. Obviously you can thin it, you can thin it with anything, uh, but I'm trying to avoid that because this stuff is that good. It is beautifully smooth. It's, oh, it, you know, I don't, words can't explain how good this stuff is until you've used it yourself, but trust me, go out and get it because it does, it hides the tiniest little scratches and it sort of almost improves your finishes. I've got some joins on here, which you'll see the video on it, I explain, which, Actually, I was a little bit worried about. Now I can't even see where they are. Um, and where we rescribed and we've done re-riveting and everything else like that, it shows you you slight little things you might want to fix. Whereas before, I've never really noticed it with other primers. Okay, and gone through. Anyway, I digress. Good stuff. Uh, but what we've done now is we've got the white coat on, and to be honest, it's been drying now for around about two or three hours. It's just starting to go off properly. We've used guns paints on this, so we've got that eggshell effect. What we're gonna do is mask up all these white areas. So we've got a plate down here, this guy on top here. Got to do a couple of buff things on the top and on the bottom and the actual, the little under plate down here, the little scrape plate. Want to take care of that and get them painted up before we come in with all the metalizers and everything else like that. We're gonna try everything with these metalizers and go work our way through. To be honest, I've got every shade of aluminium out there and a couple of stainless steels and uh, steel, uh, what else we got down there? A couple of those, titanium as well. And we're gonna go round. Now looking at the instructions for it, it doesn't show it having million different colors all over this one, but I'm gonna pick out a few and try to break up a few. So what we're gonna do is, hopefully it won't be a one you ask it, God, I hope not. But what we're gonna do is do the entire thing, aluminium as its base, have a good look at it, see what we've got. Then we're gonna come in with the different shades of these aluminiums. So, as I said, I've got them all here. So we've got polished aluminium, white, uh, sorry, matte aluminium, uh, normal aluminium. We've also got down here, white aluminium, dark aluminium, or aluminum for our American people. Steel, titanium, and the uh, dural aluminium, okay? So we've got basically five shades of aluminium and three shades of other things, not including what I'm gonna do to the exhaust area, because that will be up first thing as well, so it can be masked up afterwards, but we're gonna use the jet exhaust, see what happens down there and everything else. I'm thinking now perhaps we should have picked a bigger model to work on because you know it's quite small and I want to use as many colors as possible but my plan is is basically just your normal aluminium which is your AK-479 right the way over this and then going to come in with the matte aluminium and then we're going to come in with the side the darker aluminium uh, and things like that for around the back end where it is darker. And then what we'll do is all the little panels and various things in between it, we'll use all the other things as well. So hopefully it'll give us a very nice look, obviously how the aluminium all goes down and all the bits and pieces uh, and the different shades of it right the way through. And I'm hoping it will give us a very nice scale effect. Um, we've used it before in little bits and pieces. We used it bits on it oh, with the Typhoon, things like that. Uh, and it worked extremely well. I'm hoping it's gonna come out just the same. Really excited about using this stuff and all the rest of it, but the model itself has come together so well and it's very easy to overlook and I know I've spoken about it before and I'll bore you with it again. The Hasegawa range of kits, you know, and I'm looking down there, I'll actually go through my stash thinking, oh, I've got the Corsair, that's another nice one. We've got the Skyhawk. These range of 148 kits, the engraving is fine. It's absolutely the finest detail and the, the sort of, you know, the riveting detail, things like that. The hatches, the latches and all the rest of it are beautifully recreated. And I think in some ways we've been 
um, almost you forget about these kits because obviously you know Trumpeter have come along Hobby Boss now and we've got other new companies coming along and really sort of bringing us fantastic kits and you tend to forget that hold on Hasegawa were knocking these out in the 90s and 2000s beautiful kits no problem at all they're just a little bit of basic inside so doing really what Eddard have done here sticking in a photo etch bit bit of brands in usual bits and pieces that it actually brings them up to a nice level again which will hold their own against anybody's kit out there at all uh, and everything else okay ejector pins back then were a little bit all over the place it's a pain that they're on the control surface and all the rest of it but we've shown about getting rid of those as well but generally you know you tend to just overlook how good these kits are so it's nice to get a bit Take a step back, bit of old school. Uh, I'm thinking, yeah, damn, they were really good kits. And, you know, especially when you think of their age now, they're coming up for being sort of, you know, 15, 25 years old, things like that. They're actually really, really nice kits. So anyway, the next part of that will be up next week. My plan is um, I'm off this weekend, but definitely Monday it will be metal work. So I'm going to be piling in with the metal work. And then on Monday, you'll get the last part from the RB6 will be up with you uh, and everything else like that. So today, though, is all about reviews. So we've actually got two crackers for you. We've got here the Stormtrooper and I've actually forgotten the other one. Where's the other one? Hold on. Ugh. Into my stash because it's a double review on this one. You've got the Stormtrooper. OK, it will sit there. And you've got the sand trooper so you've got both of these kits because technically it's still a stormtrooper but the sand trooper comes with the different weapons you can see them on the box you actually get the blaster the big uh, assault cannon uh, and then the, the really big thing as well okay so you actually get four types of weapon i think because you get the pistol his normal blaster the big blaster and the other one and as i say after playing the new battlefield star wars and beta and running around as those guys absolutely love it so you've got both of those kits there if you're thinking about it, quick one for you, just go out and get the Sand Trooper because you can make the Storm Trooper from that kit and I think they're roughly the same price as well. But you've got the options for the away gear as well so you get the backpacks and all the other stuff as well as just the standard as well. So that's that one. The other one, something completely different as well, was the Mark I Tadpole, sorry, the Mark IV World War I tank, the Tadpole 135th scale beautifully done okay we've been sport recently we've looked at meng's new one uh, and things like that but this one as i say with the mortar unit on the back the extension down the back here and all the rest of it absolutely fantastic really really nice uh, kit and obviously comes with the workable tracks which are literally just a click fit so you're not having to flap around making up tracks and all the rest of it very straightforward very easy to go so technically as i said the star wars stormtroopers is just one review with both kits in one review and then obviously you've got the tack and one right down there so that's it for me another busy week uh, next week's all going to be about this one and then we're going to crack on with the helicopter as well so the helicopter will be up with you well we'll get the first couple of parts on that hopefully moving next week as well we'll be working on the helix so that's it from me so i'm going to leave you with your great work this week from the gallery so until next week everybody happy modeling take care